Hello. 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 <laughs> Hi Ellie, like we just haven't been speaking. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Um, so this, in case you are unfortunate enough not to know, is the wonderful Ellie Fleming. Um, she is the current editor of the, I would say, world premiere zine, um, The Scribe. Wow, that's bold. <laughs> world Leeds premiere zine, if nothing else. Yeah. Um, she is also um, currently literally in the middle of her exams, um, finishing up her degree in German and history. That's right, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. Although I just finished the history part yesterday, so. That's well, the German part's the part that matters anyway. Exactly, exactly. It's more important. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd get Ellie on to talk a little bit about um, what it's like learning another language, um, to talk about we've picked up a few similarities um, between lots of people in that I have here with me a collection of my sister's Harry Potter books in different languages. How many languages is that? Um, I think we've got Portuguese, Spanish and French. She studies Portuguese and Spanish. Wow. So, and when, when I first approached Ellie about talking today, um, the first thing Ellie said was like, oh, I don't know if I've got much to talk about apart from Harry Potter. So that's what I thought we'd focus on um, because it is really common that people, I think, start with Harry Potter. Um, so I was wondering what you think the thought process behind that is and what you've got from it. Well, basically, because so I've, I study German um, and like for as long as I've learned it, people always say you should read in German because like that's a really good way of learning. But it's also really daunting. Like it's really, also, I, I find it when I'm reading a book, I really want to know exactly what's happening at every point. But when you don't, when it's in a different language, you can't spend the whole time looking up every single word because it just takes too long and you lose the world to live basically. Um, so it was kind of, uh, Harry Potter was a good option because you wanted to read, but you also wanted to know <laughs> what was going on. Um, and I'm one of those people that knows them inside out. I'm actually listening to the fifth one. At the, no, I just finished the fifth one this morning, onto the sixth already, obviously. Um, <laughs> and I knew them inside out, so it was a great way to get into it and know the gist of what was going on and pick things up. For example, I didn't know the word for broom, but I quickly realised what that was because it came up so often um and they're just great like whatever language you're reading them in it's like a home to go to so it was just an easy choice for me um and like the first one's really not even it's not a long book either I mean if you went straight in with the fifth yeah that would be quite a big task but I think the first Harry Potter is a really good starting point I've heard that they're actually quite difficult books to translate because um, a lot of the words are made up but have their roots in sort of a word pun. So, you know, like just thing, things like Quidditch, people's surnames, that kind of thing. And then Hagrid's accent, I've heard, is also quite difficult to translate because he brings quite a, because he has such a distinctive accent to us. And like we, you know, you, there's a, there's a lot that comes with the way he speaks that you understand instinctively. So I've heard different stories about sort of translators having to find parallels in their own country. That's so true. I hadn't actually think of that. I thought of that. It's it kind of, um, I, I, it, I seem to remember like lots of basically just letters dropped off. Um, <laughs> like just because this is like a more relaxed way of saying a word. Um, yeah is the equivalent to, is it like a West Country accent Hagrid's got? I think it is. I think kind of, yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. I, I kind of can't picture what actually he sounds like in the books um, in German. But also I lived in Austria last year and they've got a fairly weird thing. So maybe they just gave him an Austrian dialect. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like, What was it like living in Austria? What are the differences between Austria and Germany? I will happily talk about my amazing year abroad last year, which I'm really missing right now. Um, I, um, so yeah, I, as part of my degree, I had to go, had to go abroad, Ugh, what a chore. Um, and I chose to go to Austria because um, I really liked skiing and I just thought what a good opportunity to go and live in a beautiful country. Um, but a lot of people had told me that they, they did have an accent 
and I just always thought like well it will be fine like it just will be fine um and then I got there um and I remember sitting on a bus on the way to the place I was going which was very small like I specifically asked to go to a to a smaller place because I knew that then I'd have more chance of speaking Ger more German um term, that Ellie's photos from this year are just Ellie in like sound of music costumes on the middle of mountains <laughs> like, like, literally I actually bought a sound of music costume <laughs> I had to um and uh yeah it was it was very small place because I wanted to speak more German um and it did work that was a good decision um but I remember sitting on the bus as I was on on my way there for the first time and there were some like school kids behind me and I just remember thinking like, oh, they're speaking like Czech or something. Like they must be speaking a different language. And then, and then I heard like a couple of words that I recognised and I was like, oh my God, that is supposed to be German. Like that is the language that I'm now going to have to try and understand. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a strong, it was a really strong dialect. Um, for example, so if you want to say I have in German, you say ich habe. And um, or if you want to say, yeah, I have, you'd say ich habe gehabt. And they said ich habe kopt. Oh my goodness. Like, so I was looking up this word like K-O-P-T, thinking that is what they were saying. And it was gehabt. Like it was just a whole different world. But once you tuned into it, which I did fairly quickly because I was so exposed to it, um, it, it was it got a lot easier um and I'm actually really glad I got I am really glad I went to a place with a dialect because it just is more interesting like um it's its own character I think um yeah absolutely absolutely is there um would you go back to Austria would you be interested in um learning more about other dialects um yeah so, yeah I basically I I really want to go back i really really want to go back and that's kind of my answer when people ask the dreaded what are you going to do in the future question <laughs> um and but i'm not sure in what capacity so i when i went last year i was teaching which i loved um and i'd, I'd happily do that again um but the problem is i can't really plan right now because well because no one can plan right now um <laughs> So I'm just sort of winging it. Um, but no, I definitely want to go back. And then, yeah, then the question is also, would you go back to the same place? And to be honest, I probably wouldn't because, because it, like, it had its own thing and I want to see that in a different place. Um, I want to see like the, the differences in, in living in different places. And it was like a really small, there were 5,000 people in the town um, it was surrounded by mountains. It was beautiful. Um, but I'd maybe like to go to a city or, or a slightly bigger place or just another really small place in a different part of Austria. Um, and also, I, I feel like I've kind of got a home there anyway. So I can always go back there. I might as well try and set up another home somewhere else. <laughs> you know, spread myself out. Um, but no, I definitely want to go back. It's just a question of 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 how and when maybe like an au pair or something like that i just think now's the time it is it absolutely is is there any advice you'd have um for people who are looking to learn a language um where would you begin other than harry potter <sighs> that's a good question um i don't know if, if do you know duolingo yeah <laughs> yeah so um, strong two weeks on that <laughs> i actually got a two-year anniversary email the other day yeah, I haven't been on it for about a year, so I don't know how that works. <laughs> um, so I, so I, I do German, but I also in first year, um, you could do a thing called a discovery module, and I did Italian um, from scratch, and Duolingo was great. Although you get some weird sentences, like it'll be like, "I am an apple," <laughs> like that's the sort of thing you learn. Um, Duolingo is good because it's quite like a good way of you kind of motivated to keep going on it um other ways by which music oh my god music and the thing is i'm actually it's quite sad because there's not that much good german music that's something that i've really um i'm really sad about um yeah. there's a couple of really there's a couple of good ones in austria that i found um but it's 
in comparison to other languages. For example, French music I love, um, and there's so much of it. But yeah, I, that's but music's a great way to get into it. So, for example, at the moment, I don't know if do you know Christine and the Queens? I have heard of them. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so in love, like so in love. Um, but she's um, she's a French artist and um, and she sings a lot in English, but in French as well. So you, that's, she's a good person because you kind of get a bit of both. Um, yeah, no, music I can, I, I think is one of the best ways and podcasts, although podcasts can be quite daunting because it's quite a lot, it speaks yeah. so quickly, but then, but then there are slow versions. Um, like there's a thing for German, there's a website, if you want to learn German, there's a website called Deutsche Welle and they do like slow spoken news. So it's much easier to follow and often with a transcript underneath. There's so many, that, I think that's the uh, um, amazing thing about the internet now is yeah. the, like, the number of resources there are that are just like endless. Um, so it is quite easy to learn language nowadays. If you are committed, you do have to be committed. Do you also think, because um, I'm not bilingual, um, I speak a little bit of Welsh, um, but not really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, I Spanish has always been the language that I've really wanted to learn. Um, but I haven't, I've never, like, and I, like, do you think that, um, you, do you think that being in the country helps a lot? Or do you think, like, where, you know, how, how high on importance would you situate professional teaching, teaching yourself, and being in the country of the language. So, yeah, that was actually one thing I didn't include, which I should have, is, is living there. I, come, yeah. like, I think it's because it's not that easy to do, to just casually up and move to a different country, just learn the language. Um, but being in the place, exposed to it, like, is the best way. But you've also got to do it right. So, for example, if you move to Berlin or Vienna, your it's it would be much um more difficult to get a grasp of the language because so many people speak english there want to speak english with you um and it's just quite easy to gravitate towards english people um mm -hmm. because there are so many of them whereas i i honestly didn't have an option but to speak the language because apart from the teachers in the school so few people spoke english um and so it was quite a leap of faith to go to a small place but it, like, thank God it paid off for me because I did just speak way more German than I would have. Because my friends, I had friends who went to Vienna. They had an amazing time, but um, they just gravitated towards each other. And they didn't really, like, they wouldn't say that they, they felt particularly integrated in the city like that. Um, so, yeah, that's the other thing. If I went back, I'd kind of be going back to get better at German. So a city might not actually be the best place for that. Um, but it's, 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 it's a scary thing to do. You, it's, it like, doesn't just come easily moving to a different country. But now, now, I'm, now I really want to learn French. I just want to, do, I just want to move to France. <laughs> it's like up and go. Yeah. So the book, obviously, when people think of Austria, the first book comes um, now that... <laughs> <laughs> it's Swiss. It's absolutely Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> it's Heidi, and it's just a hundred percent Swiss. That's and I just realised as I was about to say it, oh, good lord, should I even be doing this? Um, so, um, of German language books, because mm -hmm. my understanding is that Heidi was written in German, I think, mm -hmm. um, and then translated. Um, so that's that is really. Um, I have also read a book called The Muscle Feast. Um, by Bridget van der Beek, um, which was wonderful. Um, but what are your favourite book, German books, or books in translation, or books you've read in German? So I, this is kind of difficult because when I've when I've read things in German, I've had to, like as in it'll been uh, have been part of my degree. And actually, literature hasn't isn't part a massive part of the degree in Leeds. Um, we do there's a film modules. Um, but there's not so much literature. But I did read a book in second year um, called, it's called Der Camera Murder, which is like the camera, it's called, it translates as the camera killer. Um, 
<laughs> but I, don't, I think if I read it on my own terms, I maybe would have appreciated it more. But it, it has no punctuation or well, very little punctuation in it. There's no paragraphs and there's no chapters. <laughs> um, so that was a particularly challenging one. But, um, but also, I felt quite proud when I read it. And it won, it did win quite a few awards. So that's, that was a good one. Um, I think my favourite, um, which I'm reading, I actually haven't finished it because I, because lockdown happened and then I moved home and forgot to bring it with me. Um, but um, I'm reading The Kite Runner in German. Um, oh, yeah. I was about, oh yeah, I love that. But like, I haven't read in German. <laughs> <laughs> it's great because I can't quite remember. I read it when I was younger and I can't remember what happened. Um, what happens. Um, so it's quite good because I, that, I'm reading it and going like, oh, but it's in a different language. And I also, it's not the same as Harry Potter. It's kind of not, it's not a cop out. Harry Potter is a bit of a cop out because I just know what's going on, yeah. even if I don't understand the vocabulary. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say The Kite Runner. Um, uh, plays, there's some good pl German plays. Um, we did one uh, called Der Besuch der Alten Dame in, in sick form, actually. It's like the visit of the old lady. Um, and there's obviously people like Brecht, who's the playwright, and he's just like, well, I was in a play by Brecht actually at school, which was really cool. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that I haven't actually read that much German literature. Because it's not, it's quite a big task to go about, like, go about reading something in German. So I've kind of only really done it when I've been forced to. So, so may, maybe the sort of takeaway is that familiarity can really help with language learning. That you can start with your Harry Potters and then move to your kite runners, and then in the future, German literature awaits in the future. Exactly, exactly. And there's, there's so, there must be so much. I'm just unaware of it. I feel like, um, yeah. Also, speaking to people, getting recommendations from people in the country. In the, like <laughs> friends I've got in Austria saying what what would you recommend um because they would obviously have recommendations um but yeah start start familiar that's definitely a good tip and then work your way up from there <laughs> for sure <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to add um for people who are maybe um entering university or are just sort of starting out on the world of like learning a language and translating and oh god um have you enjoyed your time at uni <laughs> oh god amazing yeah I've absolutely loved it um and it's just really sad how it's ended um but um no I've I've absolutely loved it and I think studying a language in at, at uni has been a particularly like special experience um because you do you do you are forced to go abroad which I mean like is one of the best things you can do as, mu as much as it might be hard at times it really is amazing um and i just say be commit be committed it's, it's like such it's th the feeling when you th when you can when you can speak a language or when you can even just order a beer in a different language is like immense satisfaction um and like think of that when you're sat there trying to learn adjective endings <laughs> they're horrible. <laughs> they're horrible. <laughs> just think of it. Just think of it. Maybe that goes to the festival too. Just pretend you're at the festival. Exactly. Beer. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, thanks so much, Ellie. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. No, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hi, um, Ellie and I were just having a chat and um, we just thought that this point was really worth um, bringing back up um, because we were talking, Ellie was talking about her year abroad and I'll let you take it from here. Okay, so basically when I, basically I, I, I wish I read more in German, um, but for me, like an important thing about reading is the momentum with which I read a book. So I like, when you read something in quite a short space of time, it's like a, it's like a, quick romance <laughs> like you always want to go back to it and like the joy of romance books like yeah. you are fully in it and swept away by it 
yeah exactly and like when when you're reading something um when you're reading something quickly like i'm reading i don't know whether you, um what's it called tipping the velvet i'm reading at the moment oh it's sarah walters it's so good um and i really want to go and read it like i'm really inspired to go upstairs and just pick it up um but that's harder to get with a, a book in a different language because it just is harder work and you kind of kind of have to be committed to sitting there and concentrating on it um, or even looking at words while you're going. Um, so when I was on my year abroad, I read, a, I read loads, I read absolutely loads, but English um, because I want, because of the momentum of it. Um, and yeah, it was, it's something I loved because I got through so many books, but um, I wish I'd made the transition to read, I'm reading some in German because I think the more I'd read, the easier it would have got. I just think this is a really useful point to sort of encourage us to forgive ourselves that like if you're beating yourself up about not reading enough books in a different language, like there are very understandable reasons why like obviously like and sort of acknowledging that like it is going to be harder to get the momentum I think might, um, you know, be a good thing we should all do and then maybe we'll actually make it easier to read if you say like oh I know why I'm struggling right now I'm not getting into this because I'm not in it so um exactly yeah. momentum's key also I forgot to say uh, watch films in different languages mm -hmm. you can watch them with English subtitles and just hearing it will help but also um then you can move on to watching it with German subtitles and then without we <laughs> <laughs> watched such good Brazilian films recently. There's one called Neighboring Sounds um, on Mubi. For anyone, oh, I've, got movie. I've got it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> So good, so good. If anyone hasn't, is interested in what we're talking about, do check out Mubi. Um, when I signed up a few months ago, it's three pounds for like three, four months, and they have just opened up their whole library. So they had like a sort of 30 day, it's fine. You can go check it out, get what they're doing. Um, but I would highly recommend Neighboring Sounds. It was a fantastic film. It was like being on, I describe it as being on a really good night out. Um, because you, that's how immersed you are in all the noises. And it's sort of, Oh, it was just not a film for like every occasion. Um, I think I recommended it to a friend and he watched it with his house and um, it just didn't go down very well because they were in the mood for like a Friday night film. Um, oh, yeah. But for a full of immersive experience that is really transportative. Um, what was it called again? Neighbouring Sounds. Neighbouring Sounds. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Um, so thanks again for tuning into this extra little bit here. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>